Hey everyone, I'm Richard and I've got a question for you. When is a GTX 1060 perhaps not really a GTX 1060? Well, the answer is right here in the form of the cut down 3 gig version of the card that was recently released. Now this is the MSI gaming version we have here and it looks pretty much identical to the existing 6 gig version. Now what we do know is that obviously we're looking at half as much VRAM here compared to the top tier model. But there's another interesting difference too and it all comes down to the shader count. So here's a look at the spec differential. Frame buffer allocation apart, the new GTX 1060 actually has fewer CUDA cores than its bigger brother. So 1280 shaders in the top tier card gets cut down to 1152. But you will note that otherwise it's pretty much business as usual. The base and boost clocks are identical. Memory bandwidth is the same too. So Nvidia isn't cheaping out with lower bandwidth GDDR5 here. Yup, it's eight gigabits per second modules on the board. So yeah, there are two things we need to consider here with this card. First of all, to what extent does that reduction in shader count impact performance compared to the top tier 1060? And secondly, three gigabytes? What's going on there? Is it enough for modern gaming? Well, Nvidia reckons that the cut down GTX 1060 offers performance that's only around 5% slower than the standard card. And yeah, that's pretty much confirmed as you can see here in our Crisis 3 benchmark run. But there is a wrinkle here in that most of the 1060s on the market have factory overclocks in place. This MSI model, for example, it adds 88 megahertz to the core and it will happily boost to two gigahertz, which is pretty awesome actually. When we factor that into the equation, the full fat 1060 only has a 2% advantage. And yeah, there will be scenarios where the shader count differential makes no real impact whatsoever. So yeah, this is Rise of the Tomb Raider. Whether we're running at reference clocks or with the MSI overclock, our overall frame rate average is the same. And with the six gigabyte GTX 1060 in the mix, well, that only offers an additional 1% of performance. So yeah, big deal. Okay, so when the specs were released, there was a lot of discussion about whether this is really a GTX 1060, since it is using a cut down version of the GP106 core. Maybe they should have called it GTX 1050 Ti or 1060 LE or something like that. But the bottom line is that the performance differential maybe isn't enough of a big deal for Nvidia to come up with a whole new product line here. At 1080p at least, the cut down GTX 1060 beats AMD on seven of our eight benchmarks. Yeah, even Ashes of the Singularity on the cheaper 1060 beats the four gig RX 480, and it's only one frame per second behind the eight gig model. But it's the one benchmark where AMD does win Hitman on DX12. Well, that causes some issues. It's not just AMD winning here. GTX 970 is beating the cheaper 1060 here by a whisker. And really, well, really, it sort of shouldn't. Now, benchmarks are one thing, but the unique aspect of our data is that we can study performance in context. And what we see is curious. I expected to see stutter bringing the average down, but really there isn't that much, just generally depressed performance overall. So coming out of that test, I wondered, could we break the GTX 1060 3 gig model at all using our benchmark games? Could we see some serious stutter? Well, we encountered some issues, but perhaps not what we were expecting. So here's Assassin's Creed Unity at 1440p. Now you'll see sort of rectangular dips there on the frame time graph on the right from the three gig card. This represents split second stutter caused by the VRAM being tapped out. The game momentarily pauses as graphics data is swapped in and out of RAM. GTX 1060 6 gig, consistent performance throughout, no problem whatsoever. Now let's add in RX 480 in its four and eight gig iterations. You'll see the same issue manifest on the four gig AMD card. The extra memory doesn't really help at all there. Once again though, when we move up to eight gigabytes, no problems whatsoever. More concerning with GTX 1060 is the fact that we've actually lost 15% of performance at 1440p versus 5% at 1080p when the 3 gig model is stacked up against the full fat card. And that can only be down to VRAM overutilization. So my thought here is that Nvidia's driver is mitigating stutter by reducing performance overall. This would lead to a far less jarring experience during gameplay. 
So let's really push things on here. Several games have high quality texture modes or HD texture packs that require much more VRAM than the 1060's 3 gigs. So take Rise of the Tomb Raider for example. So the benchmark sequence here actually consists of three different test areas. Now before we begin we must point out the game itself recommends that we do not run this benchmark simply because we don't have enough VRAM here. But regardless here is a straight up comparison between RX 470 and both versions of the GTA. GTX 1060. Now in the first bench sequence you can see virtual parity between the two Nvidia cards while the RX 470 lags behind as you would expect but as we move on to the second sequence which is the most VRAM intensive GTX 1060 3 gig kicks off with a bout of stutter then consistently loses around 30% of its performance compared to the top tier 1060. And yes, it drops behind the RX 470. Obviously though, the 6 gig Nvidia card, no problems at all. And that AMD lead continues into the final third, even though on a computational level, the 1060 really is much stronger here. Now, it's interesting to note that the AMD card with its four gigs of RAM is managing to hold its performance level, even though it isn't meeting the game's spec. Okay then, so Assassin's Creed Unity suggested that the three gig Nvidia card could match and perhaps even better, an AMD 4 gig product in terms of memory management. But Tomb Raider here, well, that's clearly showing that an extra gigabyte of RAM can make a difference. Okay, so we've only got limited data, but what have we learned here? Well, RX 470, the 4 gig 480, and this new 1060, you'll get the best out of them at 1080p resolution. And yeah, with all of these cards, you're paying $200 or under, so you're getting excellent value. But you can't just ramp up everything to ultra and imagine you're going to get a best-in-class experience. So my advice, steer clear of HD texture packs and really high quality textures. Take notice of explicit game warnings saying you'll encounter VRAM issues. Oh yeah, and MSAA? Don't do it. Stick to those guidelines and well, I suspect you'll be just fine. And fundamentally, how much of the experience is compromised by doing this? Well, not much really. By and large though, if you can spend the extra money on the 6 gig 1060 or the 8 gig 480, well, you kind of should. Extra VRAM is always about future-proofing your setup. Okay then, so fundamentally, I reckon this new GTX 1060 is a good, well-priced product with excellent performance. And by and large, it's faster than the RX 470 and the 480. And while the VRAM issue is a concern, right now there's nothing game-breaking in having that limit in place. Okay then, so that's all I have for you right now. Do like and subscribe to support what we do, and I'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching.